Chapter 9 Ringed Saturnian Saturn Pursuit Now, secretly looking at his UPS, Zeus and Gia spotted Hades on Saturn's largest moon, named Titan. Feeling very horrified, they remembered how dangerous our solar system's second largest moon is because of its atmospheric methane gas. Meanwhile, accidentally eavesdropping on them while Zeus and Gia were conjuring up a plan, Cronus overheard the dreadful news. Now feeling very fortunate that she wasn't injured at all during the asteroid belt collision, Cronus wanted to pay it forward. Running up to take a swift glance at Hades' proximity, Cronus rapidly set off on a solo mission to search for her acquaintance. Sensing her dangerous intention, Zeus objected to it. Come back, it's much too dangerous! Zeus yelled frantically without much luck. We have to devise a safe rescue plan first! Gia also shouted to her, but to no avail. I must save her! Cronus screamed back with great apathy while flying further and further away. I have to fly out and stop her. Is anyone going to help me? Gia inquired desperately as she instantly took off. I will, Ares answered boldly as he caught up to her, joining in the chase. Soon approaching this sixth planet from the sun, Cronus went searching for this light tan moon. Using this second largest planet as a landmark, she flew just above its innermost ring, using it as a guide. Unbeknownst to her, Gia and Ares flew right behind, trying to discourage her. Advancing towards its rings, these daredevils would soon fly very fast, just above their surfaces, made up of broken rocks and ice. Now, with all of them flying on its innermost one, named the D-Ring, Gia and Ares turned out left onto the C-Ring. Closing in, they wanted to stop this madness. Realizing they are right behind her, she pulled further out to the B-Ring, with the two still trailing. Trying to shake them off, Cronus sped up and pulled further out left into the Cassini Division, which is spaced in between the A-Ring and B-Ring. Suddenly, with Cronus diving low and slowing down, this duo passed by her. Reappearing, then resuming regular speed, the chase then veered left onto the A-Ring. Seeing her in their rear-view mirror, they slowed down severely to let Cronus pass. Not worried at all, Cronus then swerved left onto the Inca division. With her nemesis still in hot pursuit, she turned left further from this planet onto its F-Ring. Hooking more westward, entering its G-Ring, this time her opponents advanced to her port side. Narrowly avoiding the moon, Mimus, which was right in front of her, Cronus abruptly executed a hard left turn, inadvertently sideswiping these two aggressive chasers. Out of control, they all ended up on its E-ring. Heading towards Enceladus, they all bounced off the moon's atmosphere. Knocked out of Saturn's rings, they all deflected towards different directions. Effortlessly glancing at its other major moons, Tethys, Dione, Rhea, and Iapetus, Cronus finally spotted its most major moon, Titan. Still out of control, Cronus managed to change course towards her desired location. Meanwhile, after gaining control and heading back, these two sad ones had to tell Zeus the bad news that they thought Cronus probably didn't make it after entering Titan's toxic methane atmosphere. Fearing the worst, this captain needed some alone time to regrip his composure. Thinking up another brilliant plan, Zeus needed two or more rescuers. So volunteering immediately, Hermes and Poseidon snapped to attention, hopped on their scooters and sped away. Pedaling as fast as he could, Hermes told his passenger that he will definitely rescue Cronus and Hades. Hold on tight now, Helios, Hermes insisted as the young Dalmatian barked repeatedly in compliance with his order. Okay now, Hermes, perhaps we should considerably decrease our acceleration, for we are rapidly advancing towards the designation, Poseidon strongly advised. Not being able to slow down fast enough and approaching at too slight of an angle, they deflected off of Titan's thick atmosphere, knocking them both out of control. 
gaining back control right away, Poseidon grew very frightened. Returning to headquarters, he told Zeus and Gia that he didn't know anything about the whereabouts of Hermes and Helios after his deflection. At the same time, on Titan, Cronus did manage to land safely on Arrakis Planitia. At 210 miles wide, this plane, Planitia, was very flat. Always appearing to be very dark on this moon's surface, Cronus had to turn on her vehicle's headlight. Panning her eyes left to right, this amazed one observed inactive volcanoes, hills, flat areas, lakes, rivers, and seas of liquid methane. Instinctively catching her peripheral vision, this vigilant seeker snapped her head right. Fortunately, because of the total darkness, she was able to see a blinking light from 50 miles away. Having a deja vu moment, she thought it was recognizable. More than curious, this suspicious looker darted across the terrain on her scooter in a flash. Hades, stay there! It's me, Cronus! She yelled, then exited her vehicle and ran towards her. Oh no, I think I'm hearing voices. What is that coming towards me? Hades imagined out loud, nightmarishly, as she ran away while in a delusional state of mind. Stop! Wait a minute! Cronus demanded just before they both ran, then tripped down a small crater unscathed. Oh, it's you! Hades cried with relief. You are so athletic for navigating through this very flammable and treacherous place. You truly are my hero! Hades proclaimed appreciatively as they both chuckled for a while, then embraced. Now relaxing for a moment in the stillness of this night, thinking they were free from danger, the methane-composed clouds right above them suddenly wrung out its contents. Pouring out methane gas, this unfortunate pair became drenched in toxicity. Hades, we should fly off this place right away! Cronus bemoaned, then both ran to their scooters very fast. Mine won't start! Hades blurted out just after her headlight dimmed low, wearing down the battery. Darn, mine won't start either! Cronus feared as she continuously tried starting it up while the lights flickered. Okay, now I think that I only have enough power for one more try. Cronus distressed before it did start on her last try. So just like a spaceship capsule with a booster rocket that just has enough power to launch, Cronus catapulted out with her client in tow. Still being doused in methane, its gas leaked onto her scooter's electrical system. Soon igniting, this flammable liquid covered part of Cronus's scooter with fire. With Titan's oxygenated atmosphere fueling it, the flame spread to Hades's. Both yelling and screaming, Cronus couldn't speed up any faster. Finally exiting its atmosphere, fortunately, the flames extinguished itself due to the lack of oxygen in space. Experiencing a very traumatic event, Cronus then flew straight back to headquarters, with Hades still in tow. Defending her insubordination to Gia, all was forgiven. Calculating a new plan, Zeus still had to have Hermes and Helios rescued. <laughs>